Nothing But The Truth. Hello, I'm Raj Chengappa from India today and your host for Nothing But The Truth. Every week, we will deal with key issues of concern and bring you perspectives and clarity as to why these matter to you and what is the clear truth that emerges. In India, there was much excitement when the Geological Survey of India, or GSI, announced recently that Riasi district in Jammu has substantial lithium deposits. Initial estimates put the mineable deposits at 6 million tons in this hilly district. If that finding is validated, India will have the world's sixth largest deposit of this rare metal. It would be ahead of China, which currently has about 5.1 million tons of it. So in this episode of Nothing But The Truth, we will look at the importance of this finding of lithium deposits and how it could kickstart India's electric vehicle revolution in the coming years. Let's first look at lithium itself. In the past decade or so, this silvery white metal has become ubiquitous in our daily life. The cell phone that you, you hold in your hand has a lithium ion battery, as do the laptops that you use. Lithium is also the battery of choice for electric vehicles, for cars, scooters, and buses. It also has a range of other uses, including as a lubricant in ceramics and glasses, or medical uses, and even in nuclear power plants. In fact, it is fast becoming central to our lives, very much like petrol or diesel is. That's why if oil is described as the black gold, lithium is now called the white gold. Like the real gold, which derives its value from it being a scarce metal, lithium also is hard to find. There are estimated 89 million tons of deposits across the world. The three Latin American countries, Bolivia, Argentina, and Chile, account for 50 million tons or more than half the total deposits in the world. The US, Australia, and China account for the remaining cache. Now India will join this exclusive club of nations that has its own deposits of mineable lithium. Lithium's value is that when compared to the classic lead acid battery, it has decisive advantages over it, and that is pushing it ahead of the race. Lead acid batteries were discovered over 100 years ago. Lithium's use in battery is just about three decades old. There are four major advantages that lithium has over lead acid batteries. And let me tell you them. The first is what is called capacity. A battery's capacity is essentially how much energy it can store and discharge. Lithium batteries are known to have a much higher energy density than lead ones. Simply put, it means that significantly more energy can be stored in a lithium battery using the same physical space as compared to a lead acid battery. And this is estimated to be 50 to 60% more, which gives lithium a decisive advantage over lead batteries. One of the advantages of this is that because it is able to store more energy, you can power your appliances for a longer time. And I'm sure all of y'all have experienced that. The second is what is called the depth of discharge. Now, in this, it is the percentage of the battery that can be safely drained out of energy without impacting its overall life. In lead acid battery, you can only discharge 50% of its energy at a time, as doing it beyond this period would impact its longevity. While for lithium, you can drain over 85% of the charge safely. That means it has a higher effective capacity as compared to lead acid options. Which brings us to its third advantage, which is efficiency. Now, efficiency or the ability of the batteries to charge faster is something that lithium does well. It scores far, far higher than other options, including lead acid batteries. Recent innovations have shown that you can charge your cell phone battery within an hour rather than wait five to six hours. Which brings us to the fourth major advantage that lithium has. Every time you discharge a battery and then put it to charge again is considered one cycle. Because the battery degrades for every cycle, the rate of degradation is much less than in a lithium battery than it is for lead batteries. Now, I, I know this sounds compl complicated, but what it means that it has a much, much longer lifespan than lead batteries have. The comparison is that 
that lead acid batteries last for about three years or so, while lithium ion batteries can go on for over 10 years. Which comes to the fifth point. Though lithium batteries are far, far costlier than lead acid ones, but because of their superior capacity, their depth of discharge, which I described, the efficiency and the lifespan, they have a decisive advantage. This is the reason that it is used in many sectors and it has now become the battery of choice. Now, having looked at the relative merits of the lithium battery, let's look at why the RIASI find in Jammu is such a big deal. Now, data tabled in parliament shows India imported lithium and lithium ion cells worth rupees 26,000 crores or more in the past three years, mostly to power electrical vehicles or EVs, smartphones and computers. What is significant is that EV production in 2022 in India saw a 200% growth with over 48,000 electric vehicles being sold. Canalys, a consultancy firm, forecasts that the EV expansion or electric vehicle expansion in India will cross over 300,000 units in 2025. This will mean that 6% of the total light car market will be dominated by EVs. Now, it gets even bigger. India expects that in 2030, which is just seven years from now, 40% of the two-wheelers and private cars in the country would be battery-operated vehicles. And it is also pushing for 100% of commercial buses to be electric vehicles by 2030. This, in fact, will cut India's petroleum consumption by as much as 156 million tons, which is worth rupees 3.5 lakh crore. Now, India is highly dependent on China for such imports, apart from Australia and Chile that I had mentioned earlier. For India to reduce its dependence on China and other countries, it is important that we start producing lithium indigenously and also making the batteries for it. The discovery of lithium in Riasi in Jammu now offers a sliver of hope for the country to build self-sufficiency in this sector. There are other needs for India. The country requires up to 903 gigawatts of energy storage to decarbonize its mobility and power sectors, that is transport and power sectors, by 2030 to meet its climate change goals that it had set. The lithium batteries will meet a majority of this demand. The discovery is significant as the Modi government has announced a production-linked incentive or a PLI scheme for manufacturing advanced chemi chemistry cells for battery storage, including the lithium-ion ones. Four companies, Rajesh Exports, Reliance New Energy Solar, Hyundai Global Motors Company, and Ola Electric Mobility, have been selected for incentives worth $2.4 billion, or the equivalent in Indian currency is rupees 18,100 crore. Yet, while the Jammu findings are exciting, there is still plenty of work to do. Apart from mining the ore, India needs to develop mineral processing capability and manufacturing prowess to be truly self-reliant in lithium batteries. There are many technical and physical challenges involved, including costly exploration processes and the lack of experience in lithium extraction. For example, the lithium deposit in Riasi was discovered as far back as 1999 by the GSI in a process of what is called the G4 stage by the GSI. Now, just to put that simply, there are four laid down stages by GSI before the lithium can be mined. These are numbered from G4 to G1. G4 is the initial survey and is known as the reconnaissance stage. Now, if they find sufficient quantity in G4 of the mineral, then the GSI moves to what is called the prospecting stage, where an estimate is made of the potential mining quality of that particular mineral. This is known as G3. Now, there is a lot of criticism that the GSI reached the G3 stage for the lithium uh, discovery almost two decades after it was first discovered in Rias. Uh, Dr. S. Raju, the current Director General of GSI, told India Today that the reason was that it was only following the National Mineral Exploration Policy, which was passed in uh, 2016, that the GSI gave thrust on exploring strategic and critical minerals, including lithium. Now, the RSE site will go to the next stage, 
which is G2, which stands for general exploration. This entails closed space drilling within a radius of about 100 to 200 meters. And this will be done across the whole deposit to determine the accurate extent of ore reserves apart from the quality of it, which is then graded. The error margin when you go to the G2 stage is reduced to 20 to 30 percent as compared to 50 percent in the G3 stage. This means that in G3, there is only a 50 percent chance that the deposit would be 6 million tons as predicted, whereas in G2, that probability is reduced to 20 to 30 percent. It will then move to the G1 stage, which is a detailed exploration and gives much more confidence in the total quantity and the quality. This process will take three to four years, and only after that, once there is a high degree of accuracy, does the GSI give this entire deposit for mining to other parties. So India, in short, is looking at a time horizon of more than six years before it gives commercial start to mining of lithium and then send it for processing and manufacturing. Another major factor that contributes to the challenges is the technology needed for lithium exploration. The Jammu find suggests a de deposit of bauxite ore rich in lithium, and this will need a separation technology to extract lithium from the ore. Such a technology is used in Chile or, or Argentina, where lithium is found in clay minerals. But here it needs to be seen how much lithium can be recovered and whether it is worth the cost. Also, there are serious environment concerns as people will have to be moved out of the district to start mining. Apart from that, there is the potential destruction of forest cover and the dangers of earthquakes because Riesi is in the high seismic region. There is another major complication or challenge. A senior official in the Union Mines and Mineral Ministry told me that lithium is considered an atomic mineral because it is used in nuclear power plants. The current law for mining such atomic minerals is highly restrictive and only permits public center enterprises to mine that too after getting many, many clearances. The ministry has put up a note to the union cabinet to take lithium out of the atomic mineral classification so that it can be uh, done both by the public and private sector because investment costs are very high when you have to mine lithium and that requires the private sector to come in in a big way. Simultaneously, there is need to set up processing and manufacturing capacity to make the batteries in India itself so that there is no delay after the mining starts. All this must be done in the next five years if India can make use of this truly exciting find of lithium deposits in Rear Sea in Jammu. For more details of India's lithium find, including telling graphics, read the latest issue of India Today magazine, which has an extensive report on the subject. Thank you for watching this episode of Nothing But The Truth. I look forward to having you with me next week. Nothing but the truth.